Welcome back friends to week 6. We are in American drama and poetry. Let me caution you this is not just about American and uh, drama and poetry. We are going to uh, handle certain seminal works of uh, non-fiction as well as essays and uh, novels and other works as well. Okay, so uh, the focus definitely in week 6 is on drama and poetry. But do not be surprised if you find an occasional reference to short story, fiction or non-fiction because of their tremendous value and significance for your, for the exam purpose. So, practice test begins, identify the work. Society is commonly too cheap, we meet at very short intervals, not having had time to acquire any new value for each other. We meet at meals three times a day and give each other a new taste of that old musty cheese that we are. We have had to agree on a certain set of rules called etiquette and politeness to make this frequent meeting tolerable and that we need not come to open war. We meet at the post office and at the sociable and about the fireside uh, every night. We live thick and are in each other's way and stumble over one another and I think that we thus lose some respect for one another. Certainly less frequency would suffice for all important and hearty communications. Consider the girls in a factory, never alone, hardly in their dreams, it would be better if they there were but one inhabitant to a square mile as where I live. The value of a man is not in his skin that we should touch him identify the author here. If you know the author, you will know the work as well. Melville, Emerson, Thoreau, Hawthorne. Go back to whatever we have been doing in week 5 and you will get the name of the author as well as the work. Second, which movement was Jonathan Edwards associated with? A. The Great Awakening, B. The Enlightenment, C transcendentalism d mysticism question 3 which work starts with the following lines man is his own star and the soul that can render an honest and a perfect man commands all light all influence all fate nothing to him falls early or too late our acts our angels are or good or ill are fatal shadows that walk by us still Choose the correct response. A. Self-reliance. B. Civil disobedience. C. Walden. D. Charlotte's Web. If you do not know what is Charlotte's Web, please look it up. One of the important works of, um, uh, American, of American literature of that period. Please look it up. Look at the author. Look at the work. Next question 4. Read the following. Henry Wiggin, who tells the story, is a star picture for the New York Mammoths. Bruce Pearson, his roommate and the third string catcher for the Mammoths is dying of Hodgkin's disease. The novel begins as Bruce calls Henry from the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota to tell him that he must come to see him and it ends with a winning season for the Mammoths and Bruce's death. After Bruce checks out of the hospital, Henry and Bruce drive to Bruce's hometown of Bainbridge, Georgia. The principal activities in Bainbridge are waiting for the meal and sorting flies on the front porch. Choose the correct answer. Which work is this? A. Beat the drum slowly. B. The southpaw. C. It looked like forever. D. Wake up stupid. Next one. Read the following. Poem. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Some visitor I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow, from my book seas of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, 
for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, nameless here for evermore. Identify the work A. Ligia, B. The Fall of the House of Usher, C. Lenore, D. Raven. And sixth question is based on the same poem, what is the dominant literary device? Please understand the dominant. This poem is known for a particular literary device. So, you may feel everything is here, but uh, the question is not what is the literary device, but the dominant one, so most prominent one. A. The frame, B. Alliteration, C. Onomatopoeia, D. Personification. Seventh, read the following. This is a poem. Do not weep, maiden, for war is kind, because your lover threw wild hands towards the sky and the affrighted steed ran on alone, do not weep, war is kind. Hoarse booming drums of the regiment, little souls who thirst for fight, these men were born to drill and die, the unexplained glory flies above them, great is the battle god, great and his kingdom, a field where a thousand corpses lie, do not weep, babe, for war is kind, because your father tumbled in the yellow trenches ragged at his breast, gulped and died, do not weep, war is kind. Who is the poet? A. Stephen Crane, B. W. H. Auden, C. Wilfred Owen, D. Siegfried Sassoon. Next question, number 8, a poem again, read the following. My life had stood a loaded gun, in corners till a day, the owner passed, identified and carried me away and now we roam in sovereign woods and now we hunt the doe and every time I speak for him the mountain street reply and do I smile, such cordial light upon the valley glow, it is as a Vesuvian face had let its pleasure through. Identify the poet A. Emily Dickinson, B. E. E. Cummings, C. Ezra Pound, D. T. S. Eliot. Next one the style of the loaded gun poem, A satire, B elliptical, C metaphysical, D gothic. Next, read the following lines by Robert Frost. I should prefer to have some boy bend them as he went out and in to fetch the cows, some boy too far from town to learn baseball, whose only play was what he found himself, summer or winter and could play alone. One by one he subdued his father's trees by riding them down over and over again until he took the stiffness out of them and not one but hung limp and not, not one was left for him to conquer. Identify the poem by Robert Frost. A. Mending wall. B. Choose something like a star. C. Birches. D. The road not taken. And the next question is also based on Frost poem. In the question 11, what is the meter of the poem? A. English sonnet, B. Petrarchan sonnet, C. Blank verse, D. None of the above. Question 12, what is the dominant literary device in this poem that is by Robert Frost? A. Personification, B. Alliteration, C. Metaphor, D. Gothic. Next question, number 13, identify the writer. Either you will go through this door or you will not go through. If you go through, there is always the risk of remembering your name. Things look at you doubly and you must look back and let them happen. If you do not go through it, it is possible to live worthily, to maintain your attitudes, to hold your position, to die bravely. But much will blind you, much will evade you. Uh, at what cost, who knows? The door itself makes no promises. It is only a door. A. Adrian Rich B. Rita Dove, C. Marion Moore, D. Langston Hughes, who identify the poet. Number 14, read the following poem. I too sing America, I am the darker brother. They send me to eat in the kitchen when company comes. But I laugh and eat well and grow strong. Tomorrow I will be at the table when company comes. Nobody will dare say to me, eat in the kitchen then. Besides, they will see how beautiful I am and be ashamed. I too am America. Who is the poet? A. Maya Angelou, B. Amiri Baraka, C. Langston Hughes, D. Gwendolyn Brooks. 
Number 15, identify the writer. All human life on the planet is born of woman. Now remember this is not a poem. The one unifying incontrovertible experience shared by all women and men is that months long period we spend unfolding inside a woman's body because young humans remain dependent upon nurture for a much longer period than other mammals and because of the division of labor long established in human groups where women not only bear and suckle but are assigned almost total responsibility for children. Most of us first know both love and disappointment, power and tenderness in the person of a woman. But can you imagine how some of them were envying you, your freedom to work, to think, to travel, to enter a room as yourself, not as some child's mother or some man's wife. We have no familiar ready-made name for a woman who defines herself by choice, neither in relation to to children, nor to men who is self-identified, who has cho chosen herself. A. Adrian Rich, B. Elizabeth Bishop, C. Betty Friedan, D. Kate Chopin. Next one. Read the following poem by Sylvia Plath. I have done it again. One year in every ten, I manage it, a sort of walking miracle, my skin uh, bright as a Nazi lampshade, my right foot a paperweight, my face a featureless fine Jew linen, peel off the napkin, O oh my enemy, do I terrify the nose, the eye pits, the full set of teeth, the soul, the sour breath will vanish in a day, soon, soon the flesh, the grave cave eight will be at home on me and I a smiling woman, I am only thirty and like the cat I have nine times to die. Now this style, what is the style I have, do not worry this is the question it may, it may not be there but please listen to me carefully I am asking you the, conf the style of the poem. So A confessional, B satirical, C gothic, D romantic which is the style, Sylvia Plath's style. Next question number 17, identify the poet. President John F. Kennedy at whose inauguration the poet delivered a poem said, he has bequeathed his nation a body of imperishable verse from which American, Americans will forever gain joy and understanding. Who did President Kennedy say these words for? A. Robert Frost, B. Carl Sandburg, C. Hart Crane, D. William Carlos Williams. Next question, read the following. I celebrate myself and what I assume you shall assume for every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you. My tongue, every atom of my blood formed from this soil, this air, born here of parents, born here from parents the same and their parents the same. I, now 37 years old in perfect health begin, hoping to cease not till death, creeds and schools in abeyance, retiring back a while sufficed at what they are but never forgotten, I harbour for good or bad, I permit to speak at every hazard, nature without check with original energy. The poem is a part of A. Walden, B. Leaves of Grass, C. Concord, D. I am nobody, who are you? 19. The poem is a celebration of A. The nature, B. Poetry, C. Democracy, D. The individual self. Number 20, read the following, I too dislike it, there are things that are important beyond all this fiddle, reading it however with a perfect contempt for it, one discovers that there is in it after all a place for the genuine. The poem belongs to the dash movement, that is your question, A surrealism, B dadaism, C modernism, D postmodernism. Number 21, images such as Ezra Pound, William Carlos Williams, H. D. and Marion Moore's poems were published in Dash. The Cosmopolitan, The Egoist, C. The Tatler, D. Vanity Fair. Number 22, read the following. I saw the best minds of my generation destroyed by madness, starving hysterical naked, dragging themselves through the negro streets at dawn looking for an angry fix. 
angel headed hipsters burning for the ancient heavenly connection to their starry dynamo in the machinery of night. Extremely well known poem and one of the best known beginnings. I saw the best minds of my generation destroyed by madness. Identify the poet A. Jack Carver, B. Philip Larkin, C. W. H. Auden, D. Allen Ginsberg. 23. The poem belonged to the dash movement. A. Lost generation, B. Modernist, C. Beat generation, D. Postmodernist. Next, read the following. I carry your heart with me in brackets. I carry it in my heart. I am never without it anywhere. I go, you go, my dear, and whatever is done by only me is your doing, my darling. I fear no fate for you are my fate, my sweet. I want no world for beautiful you are my world, my true. Look at the punctuations. Identify the poet. A. Ezra Pound, B. E. E. Cummings, C. T. S. Eliot, D. Hart Crane. Based on the same poem, this poet was known for experimenting with a punctuation, B spelling, C syntax, D all the above. Next question, identify the story. The narrator's friend William Lang, uh, Lagrand is a poor descendant of a formerly wealthy family who leaves New Orleans and travels to Sullivan's Island near Charleston, South Carolina. Lagrand builds himself a hut with the, within a middle thicket on the eastern end. The narrator meets and befriends Legrand here and he is caught up by Legrand's intelligence, mood swings and misanthropy. Legrand jo enjoys fishing and exploring and he is always accompanied by his black servant Jupiter. Question 26. You have to identify the story, choose the correct response. A. Bartleby the Scrivener. B. The Goldbug. C. Young Goodman Brown, D. The Prince and the Pauper. 27. The story belongs to the genre of A. Science fiction, sci fi, B. Romanticism, C. Detective fiction, D. Gothic. Read the following. This is your next question. It is a poem. The caged bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but longed for still, and his tune is heard on the distant hill, for the caged bird sings of freedom. Choose the correct response, identify the poet. A. Rita Dove, B. Sylvia Plath, C. Maya Angelou, D. Allen Ginsberg. Number 29, read the following. The narrator moves to England and purchases an abbey. He soon marries again, this time to the fair blue-eyed lady Rowena Trevanian of Tremaine. The narrator's bright chamber is a gothic masterpiece which includes a large window that lets in ghastly rays, a vaulted ceiling, various eastern knickknacks and large gold tapestries that hang from the walls. In this bridal chamber, the narrator and Lady Ravenna spend the first month of their marriage. During that period, the narrator realizes that Ravenna does not love him. At the beginning of the second month, Lady Ravenna, like Legia, becomes mysteriously ill. Although she recovers temporarily, she reveals a hypersensitivity to sounds and an unexplained fear of the gold tapestries which she fears are alive. Identify the story A. Rowena B. The Telltale Heart C. The Fall of the House of Usher D. Legia What is the story titled? Number 30. On whose poetry did a critic comment? French phrases and scraps of Latin and Greek punctuate his poetry. He affects obscurity and loves the abstruse. A. T. S. Eliot, B. E. E. Cummings, C. Hart Crane, D. Ezra Pound. Number 31. Identify the author. I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately to front only the essential facts of life and see if I could not learn what it had to teach and not when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. I did not wish to live what was not life. Living is so dear, nor did I wish to practice resignation unless it was quite necessary. I wanted to live deep and suck out all the marrow of life, to live so sturdily and spartan-like as to put to rout all that was not life, 
to cut a broad swath and shave clothes to drive life into a corner and reduce it to its lowest terms. The mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. What is called de resignation is confirmed desperation. From the desperate city you go into the desperate country and have to console yourself with the bravery of minks and muskrats. A stereotyped but unconscious despair is concealed even under what are called the games and amusements of mankind. There is no play in them for this comes after work, but it is a characteristic of wisdom not to do desperate things. Our life is frittered away by detail, simplify, simplify, any part of this writing can occur in any of the questions, especially for the international types of question papers. Every line is a nugget and extremely well known, simplify, simplify. These are quotations, these are quotes by A. Hawthorne, B. Cooper, C. Thoreau, D. Emerson. Which one, number 32, is not a work by Emerson? A. Self-reliance, B. The American scholar, C. Him sung at the completion of the Concord Monument, April 19, 1836, D. Civil Disobedience. Number 33, who wrote the following letter to Thoreau? I walked back to town along the railroad following your custom. The rails were expanding noisily in the hot sun and on the slope of the road bed. The wild grape and the blackberry sent up their creepers to the track. The expanse of my brief sojourn in Concord was 7.70 dollars. As you see, uh, this amount was almost what you spent for food for 8 months. This is a letter to Thoreau. Who is the writer? A. Emily Dickinson, B. E. B. White, C. James Thurber, D. Garth Williams. 34. Harriet Tubman and Levy Coffin are associated with A. Transcendentalism, B. The Underground Railroad, C. Unitarianism, D. Naturalism. Which of the movements Harriet Tubman and Levy Coffin, Coffin were associated with? Identify the author. Abraham Lincoln greeted the author in 1862 by saying, so, you are the little woman who wrote the book that started this great war. A. Margaret Fuller, B. Harriet Tubman, C. Eudora Welty, D. Harriet Beecher Stowe. And we will now discuss the answers. So, first one is uh, answer is C. Thoreau and uh, the passage is from Solitude. Okay. So, um, th um, Thoreau, Henry, David, Thoreau born in 1817 in Concord, Massachusetts. Uh, he began writing nature poetry in the 1840s. Emerson was his literary mentor and friend. In 1845, he began his famous stay on Walden Pond, about which he wrote in his experiences were written or contained in Walden. He stayed there for two years and a little above two years. Um, of course, he was one of the uh, precursors or believers in transcendentalism. We have already done that. Also, another concept is that of civil disobedience, a dedicated abolitionist. And uh, he eventually went to Harvard College, now um, Harvard University, and uh, studied the classics there. So, a well known philosopher, a great poet, a great writer, a great thinker. Okay. Uh, and this is an advice for the, uh, uh, for those who are aiming for the international kinds of exams. The transcendentalists, Emerson, Thoreau especially are indispensable. You have to know them well. Number two, the great awakening uh, we were talking about. So, Jonathan Edwards, A. Jonathan Edwards, he is the name connected. Uh, this was uh, the great awakening is a series of religious revivals, okay, uh, collectively known as the great awakening. 
which uh, um, uh, was swept over the colonies in the 1730s and 40s. One, so in New England particularly, so Jonathan Edwards was one of the most well known theologians of the 18th century okay, and also responsible for a reawakening of religious fervor. Number 3 is A, self-reliance by Emerson and question number 4 answer is Beat the Drum Slowly by Mark Harris. This was published in 1956. The poem Evermore, Nevermore of course is extremely well known, does not need any um, introduction by Poe. Answer to, so, fifth is D, Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. Number si six is A, Refrain, the refrain of the phrase Evermore, Nevermore. Seven is uh, A, Stephen Crane. Stephen Crane uh, was born in 1871, died in 1900. He was an American uh, writer, poet. He uh, participated in several wars and uh, died in 1900 in Germany, in Baden. He was a novelist, poet, short story writer, red ba badge of courage and also his novel Maggie a girl of the street which was quite uh, uh, controversial at the time of his publication. He also is uh, well known for his uh, collection of poems and also short stories such as the open boat, the bride comes to yellow sky and the blue hotel. Uh, in 1895, he published his best known work, The Red Badge of Courage and his first book of poems, The Black Riders. And Along with Maggie, the red badge of courage and his collection of poems and short stories, he has earned a place in the hall of fame of American literature. He also wrote The Monster and other stories, um, George's Mother and uh, um, Little Regiment. Basically, uh, he also, he was a, he uh, he fought or uh, participated in the war, various wars and uh, wrote about his experiences as a war correspondent in the open boat and other tales of adventure and also um, Wounds in the Rain which was published in the year uh, of his death that is 1900. Number 8 is A, Emily Dickinson, the, the odd uh, or the very peculiar, uniquely peculiar. Uh, punctuation marks should tell you the dashes and all with that it is a poem by Emily Dickinson which is another favorite of examiners. Her style that is number 9 question 9 is elliptical that is B elliptical. Number 10 is C Birches by Robert Frost and it is written in uh, free verse blank verse. So, number 11 is C. The dominant uh, literary device in the in birches is metaphor. So, number 12 is C. Number 13 is A uh, by Marion Moore and the poem is called Prospective Immigrants Please Note. Number 14 I to America or Sing America is by Langston Hughes and 15 is A. Adrian Rich, one of the foremost uh, feminist critics and the work is called Of Woman Born. Number 16 is a poem by Sylvia Plath and it is a confessional poem, A, the answer is A, the style of this poem is confessional which is a hallmark of um, all works by Sylvia Plath including his fa her famous daddy. This poem uh, that you have just seen is from uh, a poem called Lady Lazarus by Sylvia Plath, by Sylvia Plath. Number 17 A, he, he is the poet who um, uh, recited a poem at the inauguration of President John F. Kennedy, Robert Frost, born in 1874 in San Francisco, uh, went through a series of uh, occupations. Uh, even worked as a teacher and a cobbler and editor of uh, a newspaper called Sentinel 
and first published poem called My Butterfly in 1894 in the New York newspaper The Independent. By 1915, he had published two full length collections, A Boy's Will, which is extremely popular and also North of Boston, extremely well known poems, almost like a poet laureate of America. He also published New Hampshire, A Further Range, Steeple Bush and In the Clearing, Robert Frost is another extremely important poet. Number 18. So, where did these lines occur? So, it is B, Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. 19 is D, what does the poet celebrate? The individual self, more than democracy or any other virtues. Number 20 is C, Modernism and uh, the Imagist, at, uh, at least initially they all published in The Egoist. So, number 21 is B. Remember the images movement included English and American poets in the early 20th century who wrote free verse and were devoted to clarity of expression through the use of precise visual images. Imagism is a part of modernism and was officially launched in 1912 when Ezra Pound read and marked up a poem by Hilda Doolittle or H. D. Okay, he, call, he signed it H. D. Imagist and sent it to Harriet Monroe, the publisher of Poetry Magazine. The movement sprang from ideas developed by someone called T. E. Hulm, who in 1908 was uh, proposing to the Poets Club in London a poetry based on absolute accurate presentation of its subject and no excess words. He called it verbiage, too much excessive of words. One of the tenets and it is extremely important to know of imagism was to use the language of common speech, but to employ always the exact word, not the nearly exact and not the nearly um, decorative word. Imagism was a reaction against the abstract language and, and they called it, images called it the careless thinking of Georgian Romanticism, images aim to replace abstractions uh, with exactness of observed detail and exact metaphors and economy of language. In 1914, uh, Ezra Pound published Des Images, an anthology which is a collection, uh, it was edited by Ezra Pound and collected, it contained collected works of William Carlos Williams, Richard Aldington, James Joyce and Hilda Doolittle. So, therefore, in an extremely important movement, it can be asked in national and international exams. Number 22 is Allen Ginsberg's Howl. So, answer D, it belonged to the movement called the beat generation. So, answer 23 is C, beat generation. Number 24 is B, E. E. Cummings and number 25 is D, okay, and Cummings experimented with all the above, punctuation, spellings and syntax. Number 26 is B, the gold bug and number 27 is D, it belonged to the tradition of Gothic. It is a short story by Edgar Allan Poe. Number 28, The Caged Bird Sings is by Maya Angelou, so answer C. And 29, Lady uh, Ravenna and Ligia is again by Poe, a short story called Ligia, answer D. Number 30 is D, Ezra Pound. So, this is what the, the critic who said that obscure French and Latin words are thrown all over. It was said of Ezra Pound. Number 31 is C. Thoreau, simplify, simplify and number 32 is D. Civil disobedience. Number 33 is E. Uh, e. B. White, uh, answer is B. Number 34 is again B. The Underground Railroad, Harriet Tubman and 
uh, Levi Coffin, they belong to a movement called the Underground Railroad. Those who do not know, it was neither underground nor a railroad, it got its name because its activities had to be carried out in secret and in dark at night time because railway terms are uh, 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 railway terms were used in order to camouflage what these people were doing uh, they were it was an attempt or it was an uh, activity undertaken by the free slaves and also those who um, favored white people who favored or supported uh, the removal abolition of slavery from america so uh, they started initiated this movement called the underground railway various routes were lines stopping places were called stations and those who aided along the way were conductors and there were charges people who they supported were called packages of freight so all this vocabulary of railways was used to transport or carry or rather to carry the um, slaves the so called slaves out of America particularly to Canada. The network of routes extended through 14 northern states and uh, Canada became the promised land. Yeah, Canada was beyond the reach of fugitive slave hunters. Those who most actively assisted slaves to escape by the way of the so called railroad were members of the free black community including former black slaves like Harriet Tubman uh, and philanthropists, various uh, people who supported abolition slave, uh, of slavery, church leaders like Thomas Garrett and uh, the author Harriet Beecher Stowe. Number 35, the lady who started the great war, Abraham, uh, Abraham Lincoln's uh, quotation that this is the great, this is the lady or little woman who started this war. Harriet Beecher Stowe, that is the response. And uh, before we wind up, I would uh, encourage you to look up the biography of Robert Frost here on this particular link.